Hello everyone and welcome to Gearock Farms. Uh, today's video is going to be more of an educational type video. Uh, my father, he's going to walk us through his process and show us how he AIs cattle. And uh, for those of you that don't know what that means, AI is artificially inseminating, which uh, to make it even simpler, it's uh, breeding cattle without the use of a bull. It's a way for a farmer to not have to deal with a bull, yet get a variety of different genetics into his herd or um, you know get a specific genetic that he wants without going out and buying an actual bull. Here on our farm we use both. We have a bull with our breeding age heifers and some of our dry cows but then we also AI cattle as well. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and I hope you learn something. Okay, so this morning we had a cow in heat, and usually I like to, after her last calf, I would wait I would wait 90 days, but some say 60 days. So this one's real close to 90 days, so we're going to artificially inseminate her. We usually artificially inseminate about two-thirds of our milking herd. And sometimes we get cows that don't settle, so we use our live bull. They call it a cleanup or something I may be selling, or maybe I'm not so sure that we should keep her longer, so we don't want to put expensive genetics in her. But either way, the most important thing is to get the animal pregnant. Um, so we're going to show you how I got trained. Now, I've been doing this since 2001. The company that sold me the semen brought me this manual. And it, it kind of goes through the basics, but it shows you some of the anatomy of the cow, which you... You go in through the rectum, and this is what they call the cervix, and there's one, two, three spots that you have to work your breeding gun through. And then your egg, which would go down these two tubes, and it's usually only down one, unless she's gonna be doing twins for you. But the general rule we got taught is if we see her in heat in the morning, breed her in the evening. If we see her in heat in the evening, breed her in the morning. Because the egg is not there yet until roughly 12 hours later. But the timing can always be very a little. But that's generally how you do it because the semen, when we put that semen in, there's just a quarter cc of semen. And the bull will maybe have a whole cup full, I don't know, but his will last longer. So he. So he has to do it when she's in standing heat. When we artificially inseminate, we put it in after she's out of heat, maybe a few hours. So we sometimes have to guess, but that's generally a rule of thumb. So anyway, they came out and they trained me. Probably took maybe a, just a few hours, nothing, nothing really. It's like riding a bike. Once you get it, you got it. So anyway, we can go through a few other things before we go start talking about the actual breeding. But So these companies will come out and they all do it. They put these books together every month every other month and they got all their bulls sometimes there's 50 to 100 bulls in here depending on your what you're looking for and they got these graphs i always like to look at these and this will show you what you see when you see a cow everything from her her height her width her utter um strengths and not so strengths to teat length the teat closeness the further away and they got all kinds of numbers for this. I don't understand this very well, but I understand it well enough. And then, of course, the prices on some of this stuff, too. You know, you, you want to, we usually stay within, oh, $20, $25 bulls. You can't really get too much cheaper than that, but that's where we go. And then here we have a gestation chart, and you usually hang this someplace in your milk room or your barn where it can stay clean and dry. And you got 21 blocks. This is a whole year calendar. You got 21 from the top to the bottom. And a cow will cycle every 21 days on average. And a 280 day gestation. And what we normally do is so if I seen this cow in heat today, I go to the date, which were November 26th, I think. So we would write her number down there. She should have. September 1st within a few days each way it's never exact but it's so what I would do when I breed her I would circle her number and sometimes I write the name of the bull in there with it but if the number's not circled maybe it's too soon to breed her yet so then she should fall into heat somewhere in these three blocks somewhere near this number on on your uh, you know on your into your next 21 days and again it helps to keep track so if you think maybe it's a heat you come back and look here see your number over here it could be probably be a heat. It's real close. So 
that helps keep track of that. That's one way we keep track of our breeding. They also give us calendars, which again, they got. So if she was in heat today, it would show you when she would go back into heat if she wouldn't be bred. And when she would be due if you would breed her on that day. So you can use these simple calendars too. Just kind of help keep track. And then what I do, I like to do, and I've been doing this for 30 years, is I just get a regular little notebook and I go through. And it's just simple stuff. Um, for instance, anything with a circle and a star, that's usually a first calf heifer. And then she gets a neck chain number because we have tie stalls. Usually the ear tags end up falling out over time. And when she calved, the calving ease, I use a G for good, P for poor, F for fair, you know, you kind of, and the side, calf size, small, medium, large, M, S, L, the sex, bull or heifer, B or an H, the number of the calf, because then they get an ear tag, which I, uh, I got one here, I'll get it for you quick. Then they give us this nice little gun to do it with, but it's a two-piece tag, which that goes in the calf's ear, so you can read it from front to back. And I try to put the button on the inside of the ear, so it's actually facing this way, and always on the left ear, because usually the right ear is for their vaccinate tag, but it's just something we started doing, so you always know where to look, but again, um, and in that way we can roughly feel the age of our cows, because the numbers started from one, and they just keep getting larger, so that's how we keep track of our calves so then you can go back and find out whose cow that calf came from and keep track of the family. So anyway, I'm going to show you how I load a semen gun and how I preserve my semen until I inseminate the cow. So first of all, we have a simple thermos with a thermometer in it and there's a green section in there. Now a temperature of a cow, our temperature is 98.6 on average. A cow's temperature is 101 and a half on average. And the key is, is not to let the semen get too hot. Sooner a little cooler. So according to what I see here, we're in between 90 and 95 degrees. Now I gotta get it in that green section. So I will go under my water. A little bit of hot, a little bit of cold on. Maybe I can get it pretty close just by feeling it. But the dial go up. Not too bad for guessing, got right on. But you do it enough, I've been doing this for 20 years, so again. Now, there's two different types of straws they sell us. They sell us a quarter cc and a cc straw. And I got two different guns, and I've heard there's actually one gun that can do both. I don't know, this is what, what I bought this off another farmer that retired. But then I'm gonna be using the, the cc straw is what I've been buying lately. So I have to put that down into my shirt up against my body to get it to my body's temperature because that gun is cold. We're in November, the gun is cold. So you gotta warm your gun up to body temperature. Um, and then we have our sheaths. I just call them the straws, but it, and they have these little inserts and, and I get one out ready to go so I don't have to fumble it later. And then I have a stainless steel scissors, which you gotta keep him really clean. That cuts your straw, so that opens it up once we pull it out of the semen tank. And then I have a pen, and I have my inventory card, which is getting a little bit scribbled up. And what we do here is when my salesman brings me semen, he'll put these slashes down. So here are this log sticks, we bought 10 of them, so he puts 10 slashes in these slots. So when I pull that cane up and I pull one out, I put a notch through it or a slash through it. That means that's used up. Just helps me keep track of what's in my tank. Then you got one, two, three, four, five, six different canisters. So we keep our shorthorn in our jersey in canister five. We keep our brown Swiss in canister six. Just helps keep us more organized. And then one, two, and three's got my Holstein stuff in it. And here we call, he put down cleanup which cleanup is usually a cheap bull, and I usually like to put the price down just to say, okay, a cow that maybe, I don't know if I'm gonna get her pregnant, or I'm not sure she's even in heat. I don't wanna put a $25 bull in that. I put a $10 one in. Or maybe she's not sticking, and you just need to be a little more economical about it. So anyway, that's how that works. So today we're gonna, it's a pretty good cow, and we're gonna use, we're gonna use a roadster which is in canister one. And again, in the book here, I can look him up and 
shows the traits that he gives, and I look at my cow and I say, she needs improvement maybe in the udder. So I pick out a high udder bowl. And I got also a sleeve I have to put on when I go into rectum, but we can do that after. So we're gonna go get our semen. Now this is something I built, and my semen guy kind of gave me the idea when I had little kids around here, there was always this concern about them opening this up and tampering with it. Now inside this hole, it's I think something like 300 and some degrees below zero. And if I could physically stick my hand down in there, it would literally fall off. That's the concern we have. So we built this box to set it in with a false bottom in it. So this tank is secured and I couldn't put a lock on it if I wanted or some type of key that a little person couldn't open very easily. Just something extra. So we're going to go into canister one. There's a canister. Now you see two canes of, of Roadster and it usually got numbers on top and you can see. Now I don't want to pull them all the way out because you got to keep it frozen until you're ready to actually retrieve it. Now there's a little tweezers they give you you can use too. And sometimes I end up fumbling that. There, there's your quarter cc straw. Now he went into my warm water and everything else falls back down in. Now if I couldn't quite get it on the first try, I always go back down in, let it get good and cold again. And even though it's below freezing outside, it's still not even close to how cold this stuff needs to be to preserve it. You never want to expose your semen any longer than you absolutely have to. So it's very critical to, and that's how that works. Come in here. My inventory card, I slash it off. Any kind of towel. Again, this is how I was taught. They take clean water and semen, don't, you don't want them to mix. So I like to wipe the, the water off. I put the towel where it's nice and handy because I'm going to need that later. I take my stainless steel scissors, I cut it at an angle. Now we have to do this kind of quickly because it's cold out. And then we, we don't want this semen to get cold because this. The sperm will die. We kind of squeeze him into there. Pull my gun out. That's already warmed up by me. Pull my plunger back. Flip him on. Now there's a little bit of thread right here. And I have to spin him. And it's kind of like making thread into that side of that straw. And then on the top, see that little bubble, that semen. Now he goes right back down in here. Some guys ask, well, what if I'm all sweaty and hot and that? Well, then you maybe have to change your clothes or something. But you want to keep that reasonably clean and warm. So now I'm ready to breed. I like to breed with a sleeve on, with, with a shirt sleeve on. Yet yeah, some people, you know, you want to be down to a short sleeve or a light, a light shirt. But I like to put it on so, so when I put this glove on, this thing kind of binds up. Now some people put like a little clip right here, to keep it up there, but I think it kind of binds up a little bit. It helps. And then we get this gel for lubricant. Now sometimes you can use warm water too. I'll just put a little in my hand. You don't need very much. And we worry about this later. We gotta go put it place the seam now. Now normally we don't have much time. You want to get this inside your, your animal within a, uh, a few minutes. So I got this jelly, and I smear that around her anus there. Let me go in. Now she's got a lot of manure in there. Now, ideal would be if she could take a dump by herself. Otherwise, this is what they call paddling. Now we got to get some of that manure removed. So if she takes a poop right before you come to her, that's ideal. It's nice and clean in there. You can reach right in and find your cervix. Otherwise, there's just not enough room. Okay, now we're going to try to find my cervix. Take your collar. I'm going to clean. And cleanliness is the biggest part of this. You don't want to invite anything into that cervix. On this side of the cervix, it's usually okay. And I usually like to lean down a little bit. And if you got help, sometimes they can spread that, that area a little bit. But I got my cervix. Now this is a really tall cow. And if you're a short person, I've heard of people standing on a bale of hay or something to try to reach. But and I 
gently wiggle it through. You got one, two. Come on, just relax, girl. Three, there. And I can feel the end. I go through the cervix, maybe only a half inch, quarter inch. Not very far. I start it really slow. And then what I like to do is I like to get under the light. And if I don't have a dab of blood or something around that, I knew I did not go too far. That is the key. So you grip this really hard and you take your clean hand and you unturn that. Now I got my straw and it's an empty straw there now. Hold it. Nothing clean. This goes back down in here. So now that semen, probably tonight sometime, she'll drop her egg and that semen will be down there waiting for it. Oh, it was uh, September 1st, if this works, which, yeah, usually we have pretty good luck. And today is November 26th and her number is number 55. And then I have this, so I have a, the cow, the date, confirmed the bull and, and when it was due and so then when they're confirmed like back in the book here further I usually put a check and this is my way of doing it and I put a B for bump like if I could bump the calf so I'm milking these cows and they're getting closer like these are due for January I could bump that calf so I'll put a V I don't no need to have a vet or a guest later or send in a milk sample or anything and this is just a history of how these cattle are coming together. And this book is full of that. There's four years in here already. And it's time to get a new book again because my binding is falling apart. But I can put this in my back pocket, go out to the pasture, look my cattle over, flip through, and figure out you know, all their history. I like to educate. I believe us farmers got so much knowledge because we're forced to know stuff. Just like this. I didn't know anything about artificial insemination when I started milking cows. I milked cows with my dad for six years out of high school. I came here, I was here for almost 10 years before I decided I need to learn this. And it helps me just figure out calving and all that stuff. But thanks for watching. And um, if there's any other ideas that, um, things you guys got questions about, just ask and we'll, we'll give it a thought.